Hi, this is Debbie Simpson with the Be Free Respect podcast. This is from the blog post, Brain Rewiring, Layers of the Onion, as read from BeFreeRespect.com. This post was originally written and shared on March 18th, 2024. Before we begin, I want to remind you that I am not a brain specialist or brain rewiring expert. I am simply sharing my personal journey and my personal understanding as it makes sense to me. First, a trigger warning for brain retrainers. I'm going to get real about some aspects of my personal brain retraining journey that have required a little assistance. This is an ebb and flow journey after all. It's a process and it's an individual process. After two years of retraining, I now have a much better understanding of what is meant when they say that it's like peeling the layers of an onion. Remember, brain retraining isn't a one size fits all. And sometimes what fits us personally through one period of time may need a few adjustments as the seasons change. I just wanted to let you know that I will be sharing some of my particular triggers and a little ebb I found myself in I won't go into great detail, but I want to give you a heads up in case this is a post that you would rather avoid. Giving myself grace. To start with, December and January have been trigger months for me for as long as I can remember. Two significant February events from more recent years past, which I won't share, just extended this period of time for me. Brain retraining, however, led to a beautiful shift through those months. It was noticeable with my first year in, and then even more so this past season. I am grateful. Discovering EFT, or tapping, last November and adding it into my daily regime helped me coast more smoothly through those three months. I'm still human. I won't try to tell you that I danced and sang through it all but it wasn't filled with my traditional emotions. It was a much lighter experience. I gave myself grace and focused more on myself, on daily tapping and meditating and doing visualizations a handful of times each week. And beyond my brain retraining practice, I allowed myself to get on with the rest of each day without pushing myself. After all, isn't this the goal? to just get on with life in a joyful way? Self-focus and intentionally avoiding adding extras also meant that I blogged minimally as well. While I love sharing my journey and my ultimate hope is to help others, I still need to make me my central focus. When writing becomes work or stress, I just give myself permission to let it ride for a while. Life, life, (laughs) life is my main focus positive shifts. I intend to share more about this in another post at another time, but one thing that has been super beneficial for me through these past few months has been meeting with another brain retraining friend two to three times a month. Oh, the beauty of Zoom. We share our wins and positive shifts and lots of smiles engaging those mirror neurons We set up and share weekly individual intentions for ourselves at the end of our meets. This has been absolutely lovely and so beneficial to my healing journey. Setting intentions regarding personal focus and practice with someone else who understands this process has been motivating and has helped me to maintain momentum. Between these almost weekly meetings, along with a 12-week coach-led group that I joined, and daily tapping or EFT, and then simply allowing myself to focus on regular life beyond my daily practice, I have noticed some encouraging shifts. The holiday season that has traditionally been triggering for me has been noticeably less reactive this year. My fragrance sensitivity, which is the reason I started DNRS to begin with, and my emotions have been noticeably improved. I joined a weekly Bible study group in January. I'll admit I was a little hesitant at first, but I used my tools and decided to go. There are 30 or so women gathered in one room, and yet my reactions have been minimal. Getting on with life. Life is to be enjoyed. 
We aren't intended to have to live in isolation. I have been noticing an increasingly more defined clarity and an increasingly brighter light at the end of this tunnel that I have found myself in. And I thank God for this journey that has led me to learning how to retrain my brain and to understand myself with increasing clarity. Such a blessing. Am I an onion? Something I've heard often through this past two years of brain retraining is that it's like peeling the layers of an onion. As you recover, the removal of one layer can expose another. We just keep learning more about ourselves. But I never felt this personally. My focus has always been on diminishing my fragrance sensitivity. That's all I've wanted. That's all I thought I needed to improve my life. Even though I recognized other things about myself, other human realities that could certainly be less intense and more joyful. I've always had a difficult time understanding this process of peeling the layers of the onion. Until recently, as I started feeling that I was becoming less confined by a fragrance chemical sensitivity, another layer has recently become more obvious. The anxiety layer. The worry and anxiety layer has just been a part of me. Forever, it seems anyway. I recognize my mom and me more times than I care to admit. That younger me that would get frustrated with her knows now that telling someone to stop worrying is far from effective or nice. It's not any more fair to tell someone to stop their worry or anxiety than it is to tell someone to stop feeling the pain of getting their finger shut in a door. But we do this, don't we? I wish I could go back and hug my mom and apologize for my lack of understanding. Learning self-compassion is another part of this journey, however, and another step where I plan to allow more learning and tools in. I can give my mom that hug by learning how to give this compassion to myself. An ongoing process. Hmm. <laughs> As I just typed that, I remembered a dream I had 12 years ago and shared in my very first post when I started my blogging journey. I wrote it and shared it as a personal keepsake. It's titled A Hug from My Mom, which is still here in my, in my blog. Whew. After I typed that, I went back and read it. And there was a part of that dream that didn't make complete sense to me. But 12 years later, after typing that I can give my mom a hug by giving myself a hug, wow, <laughs> that dream makes more sense to me now. Wow, incredible. She's still with me. <laughs> and I love that. Uh, let's get on with this. <laughs> Anxiety layer of the onion continued. Besides telling worriers not to worry, we often accept worry and anxiety as part of who we are. We tell ourselves, I have reasons to worry, or I'm justified in my anxiety, and on and on. But does this really have to be? I had a trigger a few weeks ago that brought out some clear definitions to this particular layer of my onion that I'd probably rather not have to feel. Well, no probably about it. It's not a feeling anyone enjoys. I won't share more specifics. That part doesn't matter. But it's something that pops up often, pulls my focus in until it eventually slides away. The circumstances are usually different each time, but the theme is consistent and the emotions are the same. A new layer of the onion exposed. This last trigger diminished my daily practice the diminished cortisol and adrenaline that I'd been enjoying over the past several months was increasing and not wanting to subside. I had enough experience at this point to know that this was due to the fact that that part of my brain that wants to provide safety was working overtime. I also knew that this was a prime time to continue training, but knowing something and knowing how to get through something can be two different things. I started to allow my brain to tell me that I wasn't working hard enough with my brain retraining, that I wasn't doing the right things, that I wouldn't get through this. I allowed it to tell me that I was right to worry, that it was safer to keep these emotions at the surface. Well, the brain has a need to protect us. 
but sometimes that protection is false and overreactive. Dear brain, yes, speed up my adrenaline if I need to run out of the way of an oncoming car. I don't, however, need to keep running away from things I have no control of or that have happened in the past. So why share? Well, I'm sharing this leg of my journey because I know I'm not the only one. My blog isn't about coaching or about how-tos and brain retraining. My blog is my journey, and I hope that others who live with fragrance sensitivity or any of the many other conditions connected to limbic system impairment find hope and help through my journey. Sharing only sunshine and butterflies doesn't benefit anyone who may be experiencing that discovery of those new and uncomfortable layers. I'll admit, there are times when I've just wanted to throw my hands up and quit, but what purpose would that be serving? I've experienced so many positive shifts and I've experienced that lovely calmer state. And I know I can and I will get that back. I've experienced enough to know with certainty that training has been taking me to a better place. I'm not going to let this low point keep me there. Training, rest, and support. If someone is training for a marathon and they twist an ankle, they don't keep on running, ouch, but they don't stop taking care of their body either. They continue eating well. They continue looking at their body as a whole. While a strong ankle is needed for running, all aspects of health are important to make it to that finish line. Through this exposure of a layer I've been avoiding looking at, I realized that my personal brain retraining was declining, and I started to allow myself to feel less than good about it, less than good about myself. As I'm coming through the fog, however, I realized that that break was okay. We need to give ourselves love and compassion through the entire process. It's easy to do when we feel well, but it's just as important, if not more important, through those other times too. But I also struggled with knowing how, and I wanted to avoid going down the rabbit hole of trying to figure it all out myself. Yes, brain retraining is a self-directed process, but it isn't necessarily a process to do alone. I already have enough of a foundation to understand that what is going on is limbic system related. But what next and how? So I listened to my gut and I followed through by making an appointment with a brain retraining coach that I had previous experience with. Continued tools. While many of us may have the same or similar conditions or issues that we train for healing from, we are each individual and unique in our circumstances. Well, this has only been the second time that I have used individual coaching. I am so very grateful for the availability. It is comforting to share my personal experience with someone who is trained in understanding and in supporting that maladapted response. Our conversation and the tools she gave me are specific to my personal reactions and my personal circumstances. What they are isn't important here. What is important is to know that there is support available and that there are tools to help us through our brain's overreacting needs to protect us. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the reading of this blog post as read from BeFreeRespect.com. Check out the website for other blog posts. And start a joy and gratitude journal. Practice focus on the brighter moments of the day.